Hey everyone, it's Fiction Crypto back at it again. Today we're going to be going over a thread about the Solana hack or, you know, the wallet hack, whatever's been going on on Solana. I've been telling people to stay away from Solana. Um, it's one of the reasons me and my old partner fell out and he wanted to go explore Solana. I was like, man, Solana is not ready right now, but you know, hey, people got to learn on their own. So hopefully he wasn't affected. I do truly feel sorry for the people who were uh, affected in this. Nobody likes to lose money, especially basically when it's not our fault. But these are the things that we have to face in a unregulated market. Now, let me show you all some facts about the Zoom wallet and why I believe the Zoom wallet has certain tools and things set up for us to be almost as safe as possible. I can say that this uh, wallet is ran by a bank. So that's really, really good. Usually banks are FDIC insured, and that gives us some type of insurance when it comes to losing funds. Uh, so let's get straight into this video. And this tweet right here from Point Network, this is a long thread. I will not read the whole thread, but it states the worst thing about the ongoing Solana and Phantom problem is the slope finance hack and that people don't even understand how screwed they are. Here's why it's worse than what it seems. This thread really goes over a lot of different things because as we know, the seed phrases were stolen. So it wasn't just like a one-time event. Basically what happens when you get your seed phrase stolen is that seed phrase is like the key to your front door. And if somebody is able to clone or take the exact copy from your front door, they'll, they'll always be able to get in your wallet. Now, the thing is this team can't actually send back the money because the attackers have your seed phrases and if they send back the money the attackers can literally go right back in your wallet and steal that money again so this is a really really bad situation going on for solana this person really dived deep into what is going on they have a lot of good infographs saying essentially the root of the problem is that solana network has no way to distinguish between a real and a fake owner and to only allow the real owner to access the funds man this is really really crazy like we said we feel so sorry about uh the situation and um i mean i, I hope things like this can just stop in this industry that's why we need regulation now, going over a tweet from uh, Weasty when he is one of the top and lead developers, uh, I believe, in this crypto space. And he is one of the developers on or uh, for the Zone Wallet, excuse me. And he is going basically over the Soul Wallet or uh, Solana blockchain versus the Sun Wallet. And this is his assessment of what happened. He says, as far as I know, it's still not certain how the soul attack happened, but there are a couple theories. The two most shared and speculated are a faulty crypto signing implementation and generated keys are compromised, sent in plain text over the wire after generation. While it's never 100% possible to say a wallet is not at risk, not even for hardware wallets of any security issues, he's talking about Ledger Nanos, um, I feel that it is safe to say neither one of these speculated issues apply to the Zum wallet. We feel we are doing a better and more transparent job than most of the wallets involved. They usually get hacked. This is what he is saying. Um, the Zum wallet has been audited, which is a really, really great thing. They are ran or the data and the information part is ran by a bank. So that is another good thing. I, I remember seeing a article a long time ago, probably in the beginning of the year, where the Zum wallet was the first 
and only FDIC insured crypto wallet. Now, what FDIC is, is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And that just is a, a branch of the government of the U.S. government that insures deposits in certain banks and regions. It's very, very important. Um, going on to read a little bit more of this. He says, we are in the process of making some improvements after which the re-audit will take place. We will publicly share the report of the audit. It's very important that the creators, the developers of these wallets are transparent. We are keeping large sums of money in these wallets sometimes. Some people are treating these wallets like cold wallets, um, cold storage wallets like a Ledger Nano because they trust and believe that this system that Zum is running is safe. Um, let's go into the next one. I will leave some of these are a little bit longer, so I will leave these links in the description below. If you want to follow Zum Wallet and keep up with them, you need to go and reach out on Twitter. Here is their Twitter right here. This is a huge wallet company. Um, so you see 75,200 followers. I mean, that is a lot of followers for a crypto wallet. This is really, really cool. And this is an XRP wallet. This is not a wallet for Solana or anything like that. Now, the best of both worlds, Zoom Wallet software, wallet access to the entire XRPO ecosystem. Enter the Tangnum card. This dude was talking about this is a good reminder that if you're going to self custody more than $1,000 of crypto, you need to invest in a hardware wallet. I believe we have a solution with the Zone wallet that is just the same, a little bit cheaper, and possibly better. So, um, here from Zone wallet themselves, they say, We, of course, are shocked and very sorry for all involved. And this is another reminder that security must be a number one priority. Worry and things to focus on for wallet developers, blockchain developers, and users. Security is never done, which is so, so true. Nothing is ever 100% guaranteed. Definitely understand that because we are in an unregulated market. Um, please realize that it's about finding the sweet spot between convenience and security. Super easy is never super secure. Invest time and effort and resources into the safety of your funds. Um, this is just something good to know about the Zoom wallet. They're giving tips and tricks just to tell you like, hey, it's not 100% safe. Nothing in life is. So go with the best option. And right now, the Zoom wallet has been by far the best experience with the wallet that I've ever had. If you are interested in getting your Zump wallet, here is the website right here. You know, you can download it on the App Store or get it on the Google Play Store. So let's get into the details about privacy with the Zump wallet because I, I think this is very important. Um, we're not going to go like super deep into this, but we all need to know who is the controller of your data. What is going on behind the scenes now? Zum wallet is a non-custodial wallet and that is a wallet that creates master keys which you receive in the beginning and after you receive those keys it completely erases those keys from their database so when people say not your keys not your crypto that is exactly what they mean who is the data controller for this particular wallet now the controller for their mobile application is the integrators bv and i had to look up the integrators bv they are a bank called dmb d norderlands bank i don't know how to pronounce that um which is really really interesting because if these people control the data they know what is going on on the back end which may be a good thing for us uh people are so afraid about who's knowing your data, who's knowing your personal information. And it's really kind of standard. They go over how to collect your personal data. If you sign in on the app, sign up for the app, they have to collect your personal data just simply for AML and sanction checks. 
XRP Forensics for transaction monitoring, and Zendesk is for the support information. The types of personal data they collect are for their purposes and for a legal basis. So, you know, the mobile application user, it collects your IP address, and that's just for facilitating mobile applications, including maintaining, ensuring a secure online environment for their mobile application. Now the XRPO labs client and customer side of this collects a little bit more personal information, including your IP address, your full name, your address, email address, date of birth, telephone number, IP address, user content, and know your customer uh, data. They have to collect these things because um, crypto is a way to get around things or sanctions and stuff like that. This is a really huge industry. And like, as we see how Russia and America are kind of having their little battle, uh, Russia is uh, essentially trying to avoid sanctions and they can do that with crypto. So this is the account information, account data that they have to take in order to stop these things. Money laundering, you know, it's just like a regular bank. Now, also they keep other data such as uh, your banking details. If you are logging in with an exchange or if you are using a fiat on an off ramp, they have to keep that information. They provide a lot of different reasons as far as why they keep this information in here. They keep your communication history on the application. I, I'm, I'm assuming that is like memos, um, a copy of your ID documents, a uh, copy of your utility bills. That is how they know who you are. People think that crypto is supposed to be this anonymous thing, but it's supposed to interact with the bank system as well. And it doesn't work like that. The banks have to know who they are cashing out money to in order to stop certain criminal activity. Now, they also have like their third party uh, people that they may share data with and AFAS, Cloudflare, DigitalOcean, Firebase, Hetzner, and Stripe. Stripe is really huge company in America. Online payments for credit card payments and Tangdom cards. Also, the Verif SDK. Um, and, you know, if you keep reading into this, they tell you how long that they keep your data for. So the data is kept for as long as the account is active and for up to five to seven years, or really as long as they need to keep your data to keep their company safe. Who can access this data? Anybody that buys the company anybody who controls an authoritative position as far as like law enforcement judges they can come and see this data if they need to to prosecute somebody to the fullest extent you know this is what this industry is for it's the same thing but a newer way and an easier way to transact money it's not too much of anything different now i'm going to go over and show you how to keep your keys extra safe with the ZUM and the Tangnum card. And these things look really, really nice. So it's a super secure option. It's basically a hardware wallet that is a card. The ZUM Tangnum card allows you to hold your keys on Ledger accounts in a convenient card for you to carry with. Maintaining self-custody and complete control. The embedded chip creates and holds your private key within the card itself making it the most secure way to manage your funds basically this is a card for your xrpo account or your zone account and you can send money or crypto to this card and if the crypto is on that card nobody will be able to spend or hack into your application because they don't have the keys to that card. It's something that we have never seen before. And let me just show you some of these cards because I love the cards. They look really, really good. I'm actually about to purchase myself one um, today and I'll show you how to purchase those as well. These are looking really good. I like the birds. It's something simple. It's really good art. Hey, it looks nice. Purchase yourself a Tangem card because this is really, really interesting how it works 
I mean, you can put your crypto on this card. You can back it up on this card for your Zum account that you have on your phone. It completely separates your phone account from your card account. It's like having two accounts in one. It's basically like having a password inside of your password on a Facebook account. You have your password for your main Facebook account that shows your account, but all your statuses are plugged in into something that's totally separate, that's physical, and you have another password to that. So that is my way of uh, describing a tangent card. And this is just good stuff to know. You know, you want to be safe in this industry. You definitely want to keep your money in a place where you know where it's at. And having a tangent card will allow you to do that. Everyone is fiction crypto. I hope you all are being safe in this industry. And this is just not the time to try to get or be greedy. Linking their crypto wallets to websites that they don't know the privacy policy or anything behind that. I highly recommend reading the privacy policies on any of these companies that you're messing with. And if it's anonymous when it comes to your money, you need to stop having it. Look right here. The integrators BV is registered with the DNB bank. You don't see that in crypto. This is the zone wallet, everybody. You know, have a great day. Peace.